So Arduino has launched a new board using the Uno format. This is a follow-on from the Uno R3. This is now the Uno R4. It's definitely the best Uno board we've had to date. Some may even say it's the best Arduino board that exists. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the Arduino Uno R4, this is what it looks like. As you can see here, and we'll get into all these details in a minute, there's some big changes. There's this uh, LED matrix on here. There's a chip here and a chip there. So there are, in fact, there are two processors. This is USB-C and so on. We'll get right into this now. So there are two versions of the new Uno R4. There's the Wi-Fi version and there's the Minima. The Minima doesn't have all those other things, but it doesn't have that second chip. So this really is just a very simple um, ARM Cortex-M4 based microcontroller using the same pinout as the other Uno boards. Uh, and you've got extra things now. For example, there's an operational amp, there's a CAN bus and so on. But the really interesting one, the one that I have bought and one I'm testing today is the one with the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. And it's also got this uh, LED matrix and so on. So I said there were two chips. The board uses two processors, one for running programs and one for wireless connectivity. That's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. For programs, there is an RA4M1 series microcontroller from Renesas. And for wireless, there is an ESP32-S3 module from Expressive. So the RA4M1 is the main uh, MCU and it's an ARM-based uh, processor. It's got a 48 megahertz ARM Cortex-M4 CPU with a floating point unit. Operates at 5 volts, real-time clock, memory protection unit, digital to analog converter, 256K of flash, 32K of RAM, 8K of data flash, which is an EE prom. So the ESP32 S3 is the secondary MCU with a built-in antenna for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. This module operates at 3.3 volts and communicates with the other processor using a logic level translator. And of course, as we know from other videos, the ESP32 S3 is a dual core extensor LX7 microprocessor, runs at 3.3 volts and supports Wi-Fi 4 which is 8211BG and N, and it also supports Bluetooth LE, that's the low energy version 5. Now, the Uno R4 is better than the R3, as you'd expect, otherwise there's no really point releasing it. So what are the key points? The Uno R4 Wi-Fi maintains the same form factor pinout and 5 volt operating uh, voltage as the Uno R3, so that makes it a drop-in replacement for the R3. It has increased memory and a faster clock speed. It's got a better processor than the R3, basically. The Uno R4 Wi-Fi includes a, a range of onboard peripherals, including a 12-bit DAC, CAN bus, and an operational amplifier. And also, of course, you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, there is also a quick I2C connector, and there is support for a battery-powered real-time clock. Uh, there is a 12 by 8 red LED matrix and it uses USB-C. So all around a great upgrade compared to the R3. Now, some of you may be saying, screaming at the screen, but Gary, if it's got an ESP32, why not just make it an ESP32 board? Well, this combination of using an ARM processor with the ESP32 for Wi-Fi does seem to be quite popular. I've seen it on several different boards. And of course, Arduino do also have the Arduino Nano ESP32, which is just that. It's the dual core ESP32 S3 processor, also giving you Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I just released a video about that just a few days ago. So if you're interested in that setup, go and check out that video. Now I want to do some demos with the uh, Uno R4. A future video is going to be about the Arduino Cloud. And so I'm going to be using the Uno R4 and Arduino Cloud for that. So basically we'll take the Uno R4, we'll take a cable here which uses the quick I2C connector, plug it into a temperature and humidity sensor. And then by using Arduino Cloud, we'll send up data uh, of the temperature and the humidity. And then that will get updated on the Arduino Cloud dashboard so we can do remote monitoring. Uh, this is IoT, basically, Internet of Things, remote monitoring, in this case, temperature and humidity. Of course, you can remote monitor almost anything. But that's not in this video. That's in a future video. So do make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to make sure that you catch that when I drop that video. OK, but today's video, we're going to be getting started programming the Uno R4 and then using that LED matrix since it is one of the interesting features on this board. 
and there it is showing the heart shape which is one of the default demos they give you and in fact that's what's on the board when you start it up so to get going you need to use arduino ide 2.x go to the board manager type in uno r4 into the search box and then install the arduino uh, uno r4 board this one here just click on install that will give you all the stuff that you need to get yourself up and running with the board now the led matrix library for the uno r4 wi-fi works on the principle of creating a frame and then loading it into a frame buffer which displays that frame on the led to order control the 12 by 8 led matrix you need some memory space that sets at least 96 bits now actually the simplest way to do that is to make a two-dimensional array of bytes so you still get 96 bytes being used which is not so memory efficient rather than 96 bits but uh, it's really easy to visualize what's going on here basically that is the led matrix and you can see it there in front of you in the code so i've hacked together some code to display a two digit number on the led matrix and basically i've defined the different numbers in a half size grid so one two three four five six by eight rather than 12 by eight can you look at that there what numbers that there well the name gives it away you can see there's the number four just defined using ones and zeros and when you see that on the display there's the four there exactly as it corresponds to the ones and zeros uh, on here <laughs> Now all the code will be available on my GitHub repository, Arduino Uno R4 review. You can go through that, but basically it just takes those arrays and then adds them together side by side uh, just to kind of display the numbers. Now, are there any downsides to the Uno R4? Well, just like the Uno R3, it's not breadboard friendly in the sense you can't just stick it directly into a breadboard you can of course take leads away from here but if you look at the nano esp32 it's got the the feet on it that just go straight into the breadboard and then you can take lines away from here on this you actually have to plug into the board and kind of take flyers out it still works a lot of people use it if you're happy with that if you're used to that format go for it if you want something you can stick straight into a breadboard there are other arduino boards available and of course other boards available like the raspberry pi p and so on are there any other downsides well the main downside is the price it costs 25 euros that's 27 and a half dollars for the wi-fi version 18 euros or 20 dollars for the minimum version whereas something like a raspberry pi pico w costs just seven euros uh, so there's a huge difference in price there now as has always been the case with the r3 as well there will be clones that will appear and they will be cheaper for absolutely uh, so that's one thing to think about and the other thing if you buy directly from arduino in italy it's going to cost you in europe it was 11 euro 79 for shipping then a further 6.99 for taxes that's a vat value added tax sales tax as the americans would call it and in europe you pay it on both the delivery charge and the price so that is a uh, 20 percent roughly of those two out together so i actually paid 43 euros for this board which is a lot of money didn't how many raspberry pi pico w's i could get for that and that was shipping from italy to another eu country there will of course be local distributors in europe so there will be distributors in germany and france and so on and you'll be able to get them cheaper certainly not to pay that much for delivery and in the usa shipping generally seems to be much cheaper if you use the u.s postal service even just a few dollars in fact to ship it to you okay my name is gary sims this is gary explains here are all the handles for all the trendy and not so trendy places where you can follow me on social media this i suppose now should be an x rather than a twitter bird i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos if you have any ideas about what other kind of arduino or microcontroller videos you'd like to see please do let me know in the comments below okay that's it i'll see you in the next one